In a world of 350 billion movie podcasts, two chumps have decided that now is the time for cult movies to engage in combat. Disagreements will be had, blood may be spilled, and voiceover artists most definitely will not be paid. This is Cult Film Face-Off. Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face-Off, episode 41. With me, as always, is Chet Roivas. Hello. And I am Nick Leonard. First up, big high fives and chest bumps to Edward Fisher and Isaac Haunted Beard for recommending this pairing. Um, is there anybody else who's uh, uh, rec- uh, rec- requested this episode, yeah, there's lo- uh, t- To be honest, there's loads. I've got, I-, I don't have them to hand, but basically most of the people who've requested g- sent us recommendations for episodes. Uh, they've included The Burning versus Sleepaway Camp. It's the most requested episode by far, so thanks to everybody that's, that's emailed that request in. Nice one! So, um, as Chet just said we are looking at two seminal 80s slasher films in the blue corner we have Cropsy an alcoholic camp caretaker who is an over keen pruner oh let me get to those shrubs no not that kind of camp he likes to prune viciously and in the red corner we have a cross dressing gender bender who was once hit by a boat we of course talking about the burning directed by Tony Malin versus Sleepaway Camp, a.k.a. Nightmare Vacation, directed by Robert Hiltzik. So, let's cut to the chase and crack on with The Burning from 1981. A former summer camp caretaker who was horrifically burnt by a prank gone wrong returns to his old stomping ground to exact revenge. The Burning. This summer, if you're planning to go camping... If you're looking forward to midnight swims, don't. Listen, you're going back to the campsite. Get some matches. Build us a hot fire. Don't be long. And if you're thinking about being with someone where no one can see you, don't. Because this summer, a legend of terror isn't just a campfire story anymore. They say he smashed his way through the bunk room door, just a mass of flames. Cried out, I will return, I will have my revenge. He lives on whatever he can catch. Right now, he's out there, watching, waiting. Who's there? What happened one summer five years ago is about to happen again, and again, and again. The Burning So Chet, talk to me Have you seen uh, The Burning? Uh, I saw The Burning, well I saw a piece of The Burning in, I think it was 1992 Do you know what year it got, because it was a video nasty in England And it got re-released, cut by the BBFC I think it was 92 or 93 Yeah, I think it got released, I'm not 100% But I think it was on a, a Vipco release that's right yeah yeah it was one of the first that was that was passed after you know with cuts and I, I i rented it with a load of my friends and i think we probably got about 10 minutes in because the first murder of the woman mm. um the prostitute it was so badly edited that it was it was like it, it went from uh, uh it basically cut straight to her dead and i thought wow this is so, it, it, oh, well, it I, didn't show it didn't show any of the nothing that original first you know this was when video nasties were all over the tabloids over here and you know reservoir dogs was a, you know basically banned uh, there were all sorts of films that weren't available and so they were they're very very cautious but i remember watching that film and just thinking even as a kid if i was involved in this film to any degree i would rather it not be released than be released in this form because it was like it had been vandalized it was laughably it was incoherent basically and after that i think that you know i watched it with a group of friends we were you know 12 or whatever uh, and we just lost interest from there so i don't even think i watched more than 15 minutes before just realizing that we had to uh, had to just abandon it did you see it at that sort of time i saw it when i well i didn't have any recollection of that first scene with the killing of the prostitute i, I had no mm. recollection of it at all um i've, I've seen it twice i saw it once when I was, I think, early teens and rented it again when I was probably about 16 or 17 because of basically one sequence, which is still the best sequence by far in the film, which is the, uh, which is the, uh, the, 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 the mass killing uh, on the boat. Yeah, um, amazing. Yeah, really amazing. Um, and I don't remember the whole sequence after the origin 
footage, well, the origin sequence where um, Cropsey is burnt at Camp Blackfoot, and the scene with the, hos- the harshest hospitally orderly ever committed to celluloid. What, what, what's harsh about him? Well, basically, he says to the, he says to, I think he's like, like a doctor or a surgeon, he's like, you want to come and oh, check out at, this guy? Look you at the state of this guy. Yeah, um, I yeah unbel- unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, this, the score is is interesting here. The score was done by Rick, you know, Rick Wakeman. Rick Wakeman, yeah, yeah. The man of many capes and multitude of hats. Um, <laughs> quite effective, um, the score. Yeah, I mean, the, the tone of that first kill is kind of not really echoed throughout the rest of the film. It's kind of, it kind of got this kind of Euro kind of sleaziness to yeah, it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unbelievably sleazy. When it started um, and it got to that scene, I thought, I don't want to watch this. This looks like you know the the absolute worst dreck of that era, and it's a red herring because the yeah like the, the film it looks like it's going to be one of those horrible films mm. that's from the killer's perspective, mm. and it's not at all. It's actually it, the rest of the film's nothing like that. It's almost like they found something, some footage from some other movie, and just lo- uh, chucked it in the in in the beginning. So what do you so what what do you think um, of of the Burning now in twenty seventeen? Um, well, yeah, I, I, it is so much better than I thought it was going to be because of how it was received when I was a kid. In all the movie magazines I read, one star, one star, this is this sucks, which I can understand because it was such a mauled version of the film, that, that original release. Um, but I always thought in the back of my mind this was a terrible film, and I just think it's way better. I mean, I'll take this over any Friday the 13th, I think. I thought it was actually genuinely about as good as a film like this can get. Um, so that surprised surprised the hell out of me. But, it, uh, it's, you know, we were talking about the sleazy opening scene. I think it does actually kind of take a little while to get that out of its system, because after that bit, there's uh, a girl, suddenly a girl running in slow motion without a bra at a baseball game, and then there's a random butt shot, yeah. and then there's a shower scene. And yeah. so, some of these actors are women pretending to be girls, but some of them appear to be kids. So again, you're just kind of like, this is this would never get made today, and it's just unbelievably sleazy. But the, once... the, the Weinstein brothers were the creative force behind this. Yeah, but that's it. that's interesting as well for many reasons because I think that the sort of representation of you know m- most of the men, not all of them, but most of them are kind of high hyper-aggressive sex pests, and that's not really sugar-coated at all. Um, and the women aren't hapless bimbos at all. So, I mean, I think it looks pretty good in comparison to most slashes from that time. So, you know, the fact that the Weinsteins are involved is going to cause people to look at it a certain way at, the, at this period of time. But um, And it's also, I thought the writing was OK. I mean, the beginning sort of conundrum is uh, these girls are trying to get the camp counsellor to remove this sort of pe- this kid who's essentially a peeping Tom mm. um, and he's constantly trying to look for ways to sort of get around it there's just you know there's little morsels of plot that I think are way more interesting than, than, than sort of the competition I thought it was very interesting how long it takes to actually set the scene and actually show you those characters interacting before Cropsy starts bumping them off which you didn't really get in a lot of other slasher films of the time. I mean, it's like... I, I mean, after the, the first kill of the prostitute, it's almost like 45, 50 minutes before we actually get a kill. And then, yeah, it, it, then it ramps up for the last kind of, you know, last 30 minutes. I kind of like that. It just... It, you did actually care a little bit well, more. No, this, is you what, did this is what I'm saying. It, 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 it's, it, it's kind of refreshing in a genre where people are, are dispatched as soon as they're literally introduced, that time is spent actually building the interaction with these characters. I mean, they're very stock characters, you know. One turbo masculine guy, one geeky social outcast, one camp clown, one voice of reason, but you, you get to spend time with them and, and cares about them to a, to a certain degree. And it is pretty impressive, you know, Fisher Stevens is in it, George Costanza's in it, Holly Hunter, um, yeah, so there's a... It's, it's a, there's a lot of people who went on to do, yeah, obviously to do lots more things, as opposed to a slasher where there's a load of cast who did, went on to go and do Jack The Weinstein brothers, sort yeah. Of, yeah, they were very, they were very, very adept at finding talent, but, uh, yeah. you know... Um, so the, just going back to uh, the, the best sequence, the, and it's still the best sequence of the film. It's just done so well. The canoe attack sequence. It's just amazingly executed. The the build, the the you know the the, the lacerated forehead, the neck piercing. It's just like a fantastic sequence. Yeah, and it's just the way it doesn't. St- it just go, oh, you think, wow, okay, someone's going to get iced and then they're going to try and get away and it's just like wham wham oh my god they're really just going all in it's like one of the most weirdly satisfying is the wrong word but like you know you are in you know you are watching one of these movies to see a bit of carnage and what it really delivers it i mean completely just the way he just dices up all of yeah, these kids in I one fucking, go i fucking love it it's amazing it's amazing it's, it's really, it, it is really impressive and this was the biggest grossing horror film in japan like year to date even uh, more so than um, Cannibal Holocaust. That's, that's that's what I read. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, this film has got all of the old tricks, the old jump scares. You know, is someone dead? Oh, no, he's not. It's the patch one. He's coming. Oh, no, it's the camp counselor. You know, it does all. But there are genuinely good bits alongside it. There's the. I really loved when they're telling that story around the campfire. Oh, that's a decent jump scare. But it's not just a jump scare. The, the, the killer appears behind different kids as they're listening to yeah. the story, and I thought, oh wow, that's a really great way of sort of it representing, you know, showing yeah. that the the, 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 the kid, you know, it's all in their head. You know, they're they're really involved in the story. And then when he leaps in, I thought, fuck, is he gonna? And it took me a minute to realise it was a wind no, up. No, it's it done. Wasn't it's him. done really well. It was done really well. What wasn't done so well is, is Cropsy's makeup. I didn't think that was that bad. Oh, it was bad. It was you bad. Reckon? No, I thought I thought it was butters. I, I just thought it didn't. You know, to someone who's had these horrific burns, you're really waiting to see like a face which is just completely. It just looked very inflated and pink. It didn't. Yeah, kind re- of. It, it, it did look a bit prunish. It looked massive. It looked, it looked very prunish, and it didn't really have. Da- it was just kind of a bit melted and kind of chubby, as opposed <laughs> to being a really like a disgusting melted. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, the other the other film we talk about does someone's face who has been burnt really, really well, and I'd like to have seen something more akin to that, as opposed to the kind of the cartoonishness of Cropsy. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't mind it so much. I mean, I know it's it's held till the end to be some sort of reveal, isn't it? Or do they show it at the beginning? Or... No, this is the whole thing. It builds to that point. You see it, and you go, oh, "Okay, what? Oh, is that is that it? Prune face? Yeah, prune face. Yeah, it just does. It just doesn't really look particularly human. He looks like he's a creature. There is some really weird direction in this film. Um, some of it's really effective, but there's these odd sort of moments where it just kind of goes a bit sideways. And you're like, why on earth? Why on earth? Are, why is the director doing this? Like, there's one. There's one scene where one of the girls has her clothes stolen as she's swimming, and there's these three really fast pans into her items of clothing. Bah! There's her pants hanging on a branch. Bah! There's her shirt hanging on a branch. Bah! Her underwear, and I'm like. If this was a video game, I'd be like, okay, I've got to know where to go and get. If I had to go and collect them or something, because you're being told where they are. But it's the most superfluous mm. information. It's like I, I knew there was a problem when the clothes were vanished. I didn't need to be showing them on random twigs. That was a really weird yeah, directorial choice. Yeah, that's odd. Did you really like the Rick Wakeman soundtrack? Oh no, I thought it was interesting. As soon as it started, I was like, this is interesting. This seems like some sort of synthy score from an Italian giallo film. It was very repetitive. Repetitive. I mean, very, it, I mean, it just did the same thing again and again. I was kind of like going, just where's the variety? But th- there was there was a certain amount of kind of you know atmosphere it added, but it it was repeated a bit too much. I thought it was absolutely terrible. I mean, those just those repetitive, just repetitive looped keyboard riffs. Yeah, it was, and... it was too it was too repetitive. But I'm just I'm I'm just a sucker for a synth. So when it just crops up, I was just like, the beginning, I was like, yeah. But then it just, it didn't really develop. It just kept, no, it the, was, same I, mo- I, the same motif kept going again and again and again, which just kind of, it, it, you know, it, it can into, it's feeling a bit like nails on a blackboard. But I just love a synth soundtrack. I just thought it's fucking funny that Rick Waitman was responsible for it. I reckon um, he I reckon he knocked it up in a weekend. Oh, God, like, a it, weekend? It, I think he knocked it up in a fucking morning. Maybe an hour. Yeah, maybe an hour. It's just got re-released on vinyl and loads of people were going, like, I read loads of reviews of it going, oh, yes, finally, the... The, the classic slasher soundtrack. Did you, just like, say, wow. did you just say vinyly? <laughs> no, but uh, I should probably edit myself back in saying that, probably. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I thought it was terrible, and it just mm. was like... Yeah, I, I, mean, I, 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 I it just wasn't very imaginative. No. <laughs> um, fun, fun fact, um, to create Crops' distorted uh, POV, cinematographer wiped a load of Vaseline around the lens. Is that true? Yeah. Fact, it kind of worked, fact, I guess. Factoid. No, it did work. I've, I've, you know, it's so weird. Obviously, I haven't, looked at the, I haven't looked at these notes for like a week. And I've got, as I've got literally, this is a bullet point I've got. Corky Burger present. That's so strange. I've got, <laughs> I, I've got a, a bullet point on my notes. Corky Burger. <laughs> Just because that, that name comes up in the credits and I was like, that's a name. Oh, that's pretty, oh, that's it. Corky Burger presents. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Corky Burger. I was like, <laughs> imagine being called Corky that, Burger. Though. Yeah, me too. Um, um, the only other thing I'd say is that, uh, you know, I think this is a really legitimately, for, for a slasher film especially, a really uh, sort of engaging film. But the killer gets a really lame death. Uh, and then, thankfully, he gets finished off with an axe, which I was like, that's a bit more like it. But still, we, we could have done a bit more trying to finish him off in some sort of spectacular fashion. So that was a letdown. But otherwise, um, I, I, I would exp- it does help that I was expecting the worst. But um, this, is a, this is a really, really good slasher film, which I've... I didn't think there was many of those around. Yeah, no, it, it's it's solid. It, it's it's up there with uh, with the best of them. That's fake praise, but yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and it, 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 as I said, it, you know what makes it stand out from the crowd 
is that it, it takes time to build, set the scene. Yeah. Kills are pretty nasty as well. I mean, yeah. all of the kills are quite graphic and kind of not cartoony and not comedic, which obviously a lot of films in the genre kind of go trying to go milk it for laughs. But the kills are quite, quite gruesome, quite, quite, quite nasty. Yeah, and I just I really like I I can't think of a slasher movie that's done the thing where you know you have a you, you have the central characters and you kind of watch them get bumped off one by one, but to just basically wipe out for, is it five of them in one go? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've seen a film do that because you really like whoa. Okay, one of them's got to get away. No, no, no. Chop, chop. And you're like whoa. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it really it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's it's, the, it's brilliant that sequence. It really is brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Um, all right, cool. Well, look, shall we um, crack on to our next film? Uh, one thing, uh, um, did you, you know, it was, it, it was in the credits, it was, quote, created by Harvey Weinstein and written by Bob Weinstein mm-hmm. and Peter Lawrence. I looked up Peter Lawrence, and mm-hmm. he's one of the original writers on Thundercats, the 80s cartoon. A bit weird. <laughs> okay, fair play. Yeah. <laughs> schnarf, schnarf. So, next up is Sleepaway Camp, a.k.a. Nightmare Vacation from 1983. Angela, a traumatised and shy young girl, is sent to Camp Arawak with her cousin. Soon after her arrival, a spate of mysterious deaths occur. Who is the twisted individual behind these murders? Sleepaway Camp. Dear Mom and Dad, I've been at Sleepaway Camp... For almost three weeks. And I'm getting very scared. Welcome to Sleepaway Camp. Someone is watching you. Hey, Baba Reba! Someone is waiting for you. Someone wants to scare you to death. Turn it! Turn the wheel! Oh my god! Sleep away, camp. You won't be coming home. Have you seen it? Uh, I first saw it when you lent it to me, I believe. I think I had the box set, didn't I? Yeah, was it on VHS or DVD? DVD. DVD, yeah, so that was however many, eight years ago, seven, eight years ago yeah, or so, I while, think. It was definitely a while ago. Yeah, it was a while back. But, uh, yeah, I saw it then. I remember really liking it, but I had no recollection, so I went in pretty fresh. So you, t- when did you first see it then, if you had that box set? Was it then, so did you see I, it on DVD? Yeah, I saw it on DVD. I saw, I, I saw the sequel, which was which was billed um, Nightmare Vacation 2. So I'd seen the sequel before I'd seen the original. And then I bought the box set because it was on a cheap offer on fucking play.com. And I thought, yeah. fuck it, I'll get, I'll get all three of them. So I wanted to revisit the second one, which is way jokier uh, on, in tone than the original Sleepaway Camp. Yes. Yeah, so what, what did you think of, of watching it now? Um, it is a, it is a really weirdly full on film. Uh, I mean, if movies at any point have to have trigger warnings on the box, this should just be called trigger warning because there are so many really weirdly uh, uh, sort of full on elements. I mean, at the beginning, it starts off with a title card that says "In fond memory of Mum, a doer." Yeah. So, and, and it has this weird aggressive sense of purpose to it, but it's it had the, it has this very very strange frankness, and it's very weirdly non judgmental. Even when it puts you know it presents you with a character who's a child molester who says really really appalling things like hey i, I call them baldies no young st-. and you're just like this is but it's presented makes, you, makes your mouth water don't it it's, it's 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 kind of just presented rather than the director feeling like he has to kind of i mean the actor is definitely portraying that character but the film isn't sort of it has this weirdly kind of standoffish I, 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 I found it very brazen, and there's just nothing subtle about it. It's nothing, just... that's, yeah, yeah, but it just kind of lets everything be. The director's not trying to sort of emphasise anything. It's weird. Most of these movies are often brazenly homophobic or misogynist, and this is kind of... It presents a lot of things that... Uh, characters that fall under that category and so forth, but it doesn't really feel the need to sort of structure the film around it. It's weird. I thought it was a strangely non judgmental movie. What's interesting about this is, is that I suppose that you're meant to think that all of the people who kind of get off deserve it in some way or another. Um, I, I'm not quite sure that the kids who threw sand at Angela really deserve to all get hacked up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody else, though, all the main kills are people as a direct consequence of being complete arseholes to Angela, which is kind of like. 
yeah, you're, I mean, you're kind of rooting for these these people getting killed. I mean, there's a lot of inventive kills, but I mean, it's it's on a very very meager budget. It's it's really oddly structured as well. It's got this very very episodic structure. There's lots of fade outs and and it emphasises weird things. I mean, there's that weirdly long baseball game in the middle, which is just yeah, to that's try and... Right. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think it's filling time. Well, yeah, because it's only just to sort of set up the fact that the jocks want revenge, but that that's that you don't need to show that. Uh, that I mean, it's weirdly long. You're sitting there going, what, where, what's mm. happening here? Where, where's the drama? The start is terrible. The opening scene of Death by Boat is so poorly directed and edited that, oh, you know, it's yeah, meant no, to... I mean, it's, it's almost comes up as comedy. Yeah, it's, because you're, it's meant to depict an accident, obviously, but it's so sketchy that it looks like the girl driving the boat wanted to try and take people out on yeah, purpose. Yeah, it's kind of odd. I mean, this is the, with, it sets up a tone, you're thinking, is this, is this meant to be played for last? I, like, I think it's just very poorly directed. Angela is victimised, and it's very slow and quite gruelling, and it's all from her perspective. But she's, know, she's very, she, she cuts a very sympathetic character. I mean, I yeah, think Phil, Phil, Phelissa Rose is, is, is definitely the highlight in terms of in, in the acting chop stakes. Yeah, but you, yeah, you completely relate to it. She doesn't do anything wrong, but she becomes the enemy of everyone at the camp just by existing. Um, and, 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 yeah. and girls can be the nastiest of bitches, as is you know demonstrated. You know they can be so cutting, especially when they're talking about her like sexually developing. And so there's some really harsh comment about her being like Carpenter's nightmare. Uh, no, ta- Carpenter's dream, flat chested and just wants That's, to be nailed yeah. to the floor. Or something. I don't know. Some, I wish I'd quote that better. But um, yeah, they're <laughs> just really generally nasty, catty, vindictive girls. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all of the women are basically bitches or saints, and um, all of the men are as thick as pig shit. So there's not a lot of variety in terms of the characters. But you're totally on her side throughout, um, and that's why it's so, so many people find this film offensive. And I found so many conversations online, so many great conversations where people, some people find it to be a really progressive film, mm-hmm. um, and some people think it's just outright offensive. And I don't know where I because it's it's weird. It's really anti-abuse, and it's I don't know. It's a weird. It's a weird one because you're supposed to think that when it's revealed at the end that Angela's actually a boy it's supposed to be a shock and it is a great plot twist it, on oh, a very I, basic I, level I, I, Matt, I think it's like one of the most jaw-dropping moments in any horror film but it's also kind of supposed to explain why the kills were happening in the first place so I can understand because it implies that gender issues of any kind will sort of that's how they'll manifest themselves so I can understand why people think it's dark at the same time it's it's blatantly on her side. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, I'd agree. It's a, it's actually more in terms of morals. I think it's actually a much more complicated film than most people would ever even dream of giving it credit for. And it's you know, like I said, I was reading these really great discussions people were having who mm. felt completely different about it. Um, which I think you know, to, to have those kind of conversations about any slasher film, I think is this, it's a hell well, of an achievement. Yeah, well, it opens up a whole. I think that whole thing of, of, of having her, you know, uh, of actually being a boy, does open up a whole Pandora's box of. Well, I mean, yeah, without that, you wouldn't be having these conversations online, I'm assuming. Like, this is because a lot of people are relating to it and having to hide their sexuality and being kind of victimised by their peers and stuff, right? Yeah, it's, there's a lot of... I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it, because it's a, as a film, it's really anti-bullying, and I think that there's... As is so often the case, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, and if you're not looking to be purposefully upset, then it's, it, like no. we said, it's, a, it's a very good plot twist. But... It's, a, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing plot twist. Um... But it's just the way it's supposed to... I mean, I don't know. I, I found it weird. Like I was like, wow, so you're supposed to just... It's like it's giving you the motive as well as being a plot twist, which I don't know. Some people don't see it like that, and I just think it's... Uh... It's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting movie. Yeah, I'm not. I'd be interested in what the director says about it. Whether he had some kind of big, you know. Apparently, he he, he seems to be quite oblivious. Um, yeah, which, like, he, which is what I imagined. <laughs> he, yeah, was just, he, he was just going for maximum shock. I mean, yeah, the way I, that that's filmed, you know, is done in this kind of it's as opposed to just being a reveal and you go, oh my god, the way it's all. I mean, it's kind of like it almost sounds like she's making a noise like a wild animal. Yeah. When, when the reveal's done. So I think it's just turning everything, just fucking maximum shock effect, really. Yeah, um, no, I Because it's, it's a distorted kind of mask that she's wearing. Well, the, the boy who's, obviously, the boy whose body it is, they, they made a, you know, a mask of her face, which is, you know, which is a very distorted version of what she looks like, which mm. makes just for such a, a shocking image, as well as having, obviously, that, the gender, the, 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 uh, the meat and veg there as well. Yeah. Um, but there's also that weird bit where it's revealed that his dad, uh, his, uh, the, 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 the twins' dad was gay because he was sleeping with the guy who drove the boat. I mean, that, all that information is thrown at you so quickly. You're like, mm. what? What? Yeah. And he was having <laughs> sex with the guy driving the boat that killed the children. I mean, what? I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it is a, a real, a proper WTF movie. And it's, 
most movies wish they could be this sort of grippingly weird. Well, and like is, I said, yeah. Yeah. it's it, the weirdly non-judgmental nature of it is... It, it's it's just, like, fucking quite brazen with the things it throws at you. But it's so, it, when, when it depicts that, you know, the old guy who works at the camp and this young yeah, student yeah. who's, you know, could, could be his granddaughter asks him on a date and they just yeah. start setting up a date and it doesn't... I was like, whoa! Yeah, it's fucking odd. You're like, that, why, why is that even happening? Why why should you get any interest in entertaining that idea? It's, it's, it's not it's, it's not presented as warped and it's not presented no, as normal. It's just, no, it's it's just, just so in boring. the film. It's just yeah, exactly, it's, exactly. It's, so that's, it's, um, it's unusual in that sense, the film, mm. for sure. I, I mean, I think the scariest thing on camera is the amount of young men wearing crop tops. <laughs> yeah, that's horrific. That's the real horror here. I mean, it? I'm so glad that that has not come back in some sense. <laughs> it's in, it's in only fashion. a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and special mention has to go to Frank the Cop's fake tash. I mean, that is a thing to behold. I don't remember. Oh my God, are you kidding me? No. Oh, if we're on the video on this. If you, if you, there's a before and after. Obviously, the actor has gone off and shaved the tash off before they've completed filming because he comes back for the final sequence just before the reveal of Angela with the worst fake tash. <laughs> it's a thing to behold. Okay, I'll, I'll look forward to uh, finding that when we put the video together. Complete catastrophe. <laughs> Kill um, me. Um, fun fact. Almost the entire crew is made up of the crew who just shot Creepshow. Really? Why was that the case? Yeah. I've got no idea. <laughs> it's just something that I, I came across while reading about it. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a really interesting... It's, it's a relentlessly interesting movie, which, you know, there aren't many even vaguely interesting slasher movies. Actually, I'd kind of say that about both of these films, so... Well, that's why, they start, I mean, that's why they've got their cult status. I mean, Sleepaway Camp has a whole kind of, like... I mean, a huge... Uh, a huge cult following. I mean... Yeah, no, a... they, do that, they do that festival somewhere, don't they, where they all go and watch it in the location where they filmed it, I think? Right, OK. Yeah, I had a, I saw sort of a, uh, an advertisement for a documentary about it in the, in a similar vein to that Troll Two documentary that came out a few years ago, where all these people went to a sort of faux summer camp. I think mm-hmm. somewhere, if not at the actual location, in that part of America, and they right. all watched. I guess the trilogy. I haven't seen either of the sequels. What are they like? Well, I've seen the second one. I haven't seen. I, I, well, I can't, I, my memory is. I, well, I had the box set, didn't I? But I can't remember anything about the third, which makes me think that. It's the weakest of the three, so I've got just no recollection of it. Second one is way more comedic, and I think it's, I think it's Bruce Springsteen's sister plays Angela. Oh, and she's very good, but it's just done very, very jokily. Yeah, I mean, it's a long time since I've seen it. Um, it, 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 was, it was certainly watchable, but the third one is was was was, was completely forgettable. Uh, well, I mean, okay, so where are we going to go on these? Where, I mean, where, where are you leaning? Um, oh, it's it's quite difficult to call this. Um, mm. I was kind of toing and froing when I was watching them. Difficult, difficult, tight, tighter than a submarine door. This one because they're both. They, I, I kind of enjoy both equally. I think the burning is a better made film. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, th- I think it's. Sh- it, I think it's shot and edited more competently than Sleepaway Camp. So technically, it yeah. is better on a technical level. It's better, and I think and the that way I that... yeah, go on. I, the, I was just going to say the way I've just suddenly the, the, the rule I've just imposed on myself this second is if we had to throw one in, in, in an incinerator forever that could not be part of film history, it couldn't be Sleepaway Camp. We have to keep that, so I'd have to chuck the burning in the incinerator. As much as I think that's out of order, because it's it's one of the few really actually legitimately good slasher films I've ever seen. It's very difficult because for, for me the two the 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 the, the, the two strongest thing I mean the, the canoe attack sequence and the and obviously the the fucking the reveal at the end of sleepaway camp I mean the the reveal at the end of sleepaway camp is I not just I wouldn't just confine it to to shocking moments in horrible but shocking moments in like in film full stop I mean, I remember first watching that. That's why I lent it to you. I was like, you have to watch these films. Yeah. Like, because, you just, because you have to watch Sleep Boy Camp. I mean, I literally was completely gobsmacked. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, top three kind of, like, jaw-dropping moments I've ever seen in the film. Um, fuck. Difficult. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to say Sleep Boy Camp just because I yeah. think it's... Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's a better made film. I just think it's it's you know it's one of those films that you, if you were writing a book about horror, you can't. Mm. I mean, you can't really lose either. But if you have to, you no. can't. You, you have to keep Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I feel bad. I feel bad doing it because they're burning. I, well, yeah, this is the problem. I mean, they're, they're both. Re- there's really not a lot between them. No, but I'm I'm, I, that, I'm just going to have to stick <sighs> to those guns. Terrible yeah. situation. Yeah. Um, okay. Ugh. 
Well, I suppose, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I could be quite easily, you know, swayed towards Sleep Boy. Well, for me, it's the ending. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't ignore that ending. And also, just how fucking, it is just got this really odd, its own tone to it, which is yeah. just very interesting for a horror film and not formulaic. So, yeah, fuck it. Go on, then. We've we, 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 we got to get it in the can. So, yeah, Sleep Boy can. But it's fucking difficult. The burning is, is really good. Yeah, I feel bad putting the burning in 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 the in the in the well, bin. The burning, but, you know. in the, the burning in the in the incinerator, kind of apt. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. Well, then, yeah, sleep by camp. All right, that's it. That's what they call a wrap. Um, thank you so much for listening. Uh, you can ca- you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, all the episodes are cut to YouTube. Um, Chat bless. See you later. Nice one. Peace and fucking. Film Face Off. The burning came right smack dab in the middle, right between Friday the 13th and Maniac and The Prowler and all those great splatter movies of the 80s where I was just going from just killing, I felt like an assassin going from one movie to the next, just wiping out teenagers. The burning came in. I actually turned down Friday the 13th Part 2 to do the burning because Jason was running around in Friday the 13th Part 2. And as you know, there is no Jason. Jason was a kid that died in the first movie. If you watch a Friday the 13th movie past Part 1, you're stupid because there's no Jason. There shouldn't be a Jason. That's what I was thinking. And they said, oh, no, we're going to change that. And then it comes out and there's Jason, you know, so. And he's still around. I cut his head in half in part four. We still have Jason running around, you know. Anyway, so that's when the burning came. And I did it. (laughs) 